Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Hart, for those of you that are new. And today I'll be breaking down this eight-game NBA slate here for Friday night on DraftKings, kind of talking through who I like, who I don't like, game-by-game game breakdown, all the good stuff in this video. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And let's get right into it. Um, I mean, I could really, really, really tilt for a good 10, 15 minutes about the, just the amount of stuff I've gotten screwed over with in DFS over the past week. This past weekend, I pretty much almost had an injury in every single lineup past few days got screwed by cam thomas and that whole nets thing yesterday um today kobe white had his worst game since he started in place of zach levine just absolutely just frustrating stuff it, it just i'm getting screwed to the absolute maximum and it's just one of those lulls in dfs where you know you have the ups and downs and right now i'm going through a down very annoying but it's going to stick to the process because that's what has led to good success for me so as much as I do want to tilt, uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. I'm just going to get right into this breakdown. So heading over here tomorrow, uh, we have the Nets, or excuse me, the Knicks versus the Magic. One half point spread right now, 226 total. Nets, Wizards, six point spread, 240 total. So that, obviously that looks like a very good game to target. Kings, Hawks, one point spread, 250 and a half. Obviously fantastic game to target. Bucks, Cavs, five point spread, 239. Sixers, Rockets, one point spread, 218 and a half. Very, very little total there. Thunder, Nuggets, uh, three and a half point spread, 229 and a half. And then Hornets, Suns, 15 point spread, 233 and a half total. So we do have some news that we'll talk about in some of those later games. But starting off here versus, uh, you know, Brooklyn versus the Wizards. Obviously, there's a whole a lot of commotion in the DFS gambling tout space on Twitter. Uh, when it came to the Nets here in the whole Mikel Bridges situation, it's just hilarious stuff. If you guys need a good read, go you know go look up the Gambling Twitter and Mikel Bridges and all this stuff that kind of hop happened and popped off yesterday about that. Just hilarious stuff. Uh, <laughs> wild, wild stuff. Uh, but yeah, we got Mikel Bridges here, 7.3K. This team should be good to go. I mean, they rested everyone uh, in that game yesterday, but uh, here for this game tomorrow, everyone should be good to go. Full strength here uh, for the most part. Obviously, Claxton still has that kind of that questionable tag, but he should be good to go, so... I actually really, really like the price tags here going against Washington, obviously one of the worst teams in the league. So I think it makes sense to at least have a good amount of interest in the, at least one or two of the guys on the net side, just because they're very, very cheap. Uh, and they all come in at, you know, great, great price tags, great, great matchup. So good amount of interest in the faint, the four main guys here. Uh, Cam Thomas would probably be my favorite, just the cheapest of the bunch, but still all four guys look really, really strong secondary options here on the net side. Uh, Kim Johnson, always kind of one of those random GPP plays you could go to. Uh, should play, you know, mid-20s minutes, maybe close to 30. Uh, you know, really need him to hit his shots to kind of go off. So at 5.7, that's kind of what you're paying for. Hopefully he goes for a ceiling game. Uh, otherwise, not much interest in this team for me here. DFS, Royce and York, I guess, are fine, you know, guys under 5K. Other than that, you know, it's really just kind of sticking with the main starting lineup for me. Personally, that's it. Moving on to Washington here. As I always say, if you think this is going to be a close game, most likely because Kyle Kuzma, you know, has a pretty solid game. Uh, you know, recently Trey Jones has, or excuse me, Ty Jones has been stepping up, but it's one of those things. Are the minutes going to be that secure? Recently they have been, but before that, we know they're all very up and down. Uh, his production, as you can see, has been very up and down, very hard to trust. So I don't love these guys for the price tags besides pretty much Kyle Kuzma. I mean, sure you can land on pool. Sure you can land on Ty Jones. Gafford comes in at okay price tag, 6k. You know, he's, if he stays out of foul trouble, he's one of those guys who can actually have solid upside. But no, you know, no one really, really stands out to me. Denny's fine at 5.5k, if you 5.9k if you land on him. Otherwise, they're they're all just kind of there. Not much to like. On the next side here versus Orlando. Orlando, uh, you know, plays very slow, very good defensive team. So uh these guys are more just secondary options. Uh, I don't have really much interest in Randall right now or Brunson, even though they both have pretty solid ceilings. Obviously, Brunson's been pretty score independent, but as you can see, he's had some solid up, upside the past three games. Randall, same thing. He's I'd say he's a little bit safer than Brunson just because of the rebounding and assist upside. Even though his assist numbers have been down the past few games, and he usually shoots the ball close to 20 times a game. So I, I think they're fine if you land on them. They'll be definitely very contrarian. But I've seen it's not the best matchup going against Orlando. Slow-paced uh, team, slow-paced game. Uh, not not a lot to like here for the Knicks side. Barrett's always kind of one of those random mid-range GPP, GPP plays if you do want to play him. Hardenstein's been starting, you know, been playing pretty solid minutes, as you can see. 30 or more minutes if he's staying out of foul trouble. Has that double-double upside, can't go for a few blocks, assists, steals. So I honestly think he'd probably be my favorite play, but one of those things, I'm not going to go on my way to play him. Uh, Hart's all over the board in terms of his production. Very hard to like him there. 
10 minutes quickly. Uh, he's been a little bit better recently. The past four out of five games, gone for 20 or more, almost 25 or more. So he, he has that upside, 4.9K. I do think he's probably pretty interesting at that price tag. Probably my favorite play on the Knicks side here right now. Moving on to Orlando. I think they're all priced about right. Obviously, Paolo's kind of leading this team here, four straight of 40 or more fancy points. Uh, Franz been stepping up recently as well. They're just kind of there. They don't feel like must plays or anyone you land on. I mean, if secondary options, sure. But otherwise, not a ton of interest in this team for me once again. It's just very hard, you know, going to these guys here. Anthony Black's been getting the start with no faults. A little bit better recent, but still, uh, no one really sticks out to me on the Orlando side. Moving on to Toronto here versus Boston. Boston just played tonight. Uh, there was no Jalen Brown, so we'll see what happens with that news. Maybe he plays and Tatum rests. I could see that being a possibility. Maybe in Porzingis. What we'll to wait and see. But right now on the Toronto side here, not the best matchup, obviously going against Boston, but still, Siakam and Pascal are going to lead this. Excuse me. Scotty and Pascal are going to lead this team here. I think they're both, you know, solid contrarian options. OG should see a ton of minutes here. Uh, sorry, guys, I am sick, so I'm, I'm kind of just slurring my words, uh, kind of mumbling through this. But uh, 6K for OG, I think it's pretty interesting. You know, he should be playing close to 35 minutes. It's one of those things where this year he's kind of very dependent on if he hits his shots. Usually he's kind of able to make up for it with blocks and steals. Uh, but this year he's kind of a little bit, been a little bit more down, up and down, you know, kind of swing-wise in terms of his fantasy production, but still 6K, they're going to need him to go Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, all those guys. So I actually have a good amount of interest in him there in the mid-range. Schroeder was moved to the bench, so let's keep an eye out on that. If he comes off the bench again, he did play 28 minutes, but still coming off the bench, 5.9K. Don't love that. Obviously, it's a big bump to Scotty Barnes' assist there if he's going to be the kind of the main point guard. With Schroeder moving to the bench. Poldle, they're probably going to need his defense there going against uh, Porzingis, going against possibly Al Horford. So I think it's a fine GPP option, 5.7. Otherwise, that's really it. Scary Trent's been playing solid minutes, but very, very score independent. Precious, if you think there's some, you know, sort of trouble, foul trouble for Portal, you can look to him. Boucher, kind of a very cheap point, uh, you know, solid dart throw value piece at 3.7. Moving on to Boston here. On the Boston side, obviously we had to wait for this news. You know, Jalen Brown was out tonight. Will he play tomorrow? Tatum played tonight. Will he be out tomorrow? Will they kind of, you know, flip-flop that situation there? Will they maybe rest Porzingis on a back-to-back? Uh, so that, that's kind of the news we do have to wait for. So hard to kind of really describe what's going to happen here. Uh, but as of right now, I do think, you know, Brown should probably be good to go here. But obviously, I don't want to assume. Let's just assume he's out for right now. So if he's out, we're going to get the starting lineup of Tatum, Porzingis, White, Holiday. And they did start Al Horford. Uh, with all these guys playing, I really only have interest in Tatum to probably Porzingis. Horford comes in at a decent price tag, 6000 Should play, you know, mid-20s minutes. Production's kind of all over the place. but. He does have some upside. So those three would probably be the most interesting to me. Otherwise, it kind of feels like dart throws to take shots on guys like Holiday and White. Holiday's price is interesting. You know, the production, been there the past few games, but been very sporadic overall. That's really, it's, it's really just more a wait-and-see approach, kind of see what happens with the news there for the boss side and kind of really decide how we want to attack them if we do want to go to them. But we're getting one of the best, if not the best, game environments on the slate here. Sacramento versus Atlanta for the Sacramento side here. So bonus is definitely just way too cheap here still. Um, still priced down 9.7K. Has the triple-double upside. He's been so, so consistent and solid this year. So one of those guys I'm going to throw in the player pool that I do really like. Same thing with Fox, 9.4K. One of those things, as you can see, they're, they're kind of like Jokic and Jamal Murray where you can pretty much play both of them together. Not not going to really uh, carve into each other's upside too, too much. They can both have really, really good games alongside each other. Um, because they they just work so well, you know, going in that you know two man game pick and rolls. Uh, so really, really like you know Sabonis and Fox here coming off that forty three uh, point game there. I mean, Fox has been him this season, so has Sabonis. Like him a lot, like both, like both of them a lot. Tame and talk. Keegan Murray, don't love the price tag six point five k, but the minutes have been really really good. If he's been out of foul trouble, now his shot has kind of been all over the place. But if he does hit his shots, you know he could play mid thirty minutes. And easily go for 30 plus. So if you want to get different, you could definitely land on him. I, I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, Malik Monk, kind of the same thing. Minutes are all over the place, but he can definitely go off GPP. So he definitely has GPP upside. Herter, uh, kind of, you can throw him in the same player pool, but he's been absolutely god awful pretty much the past two years for them. Hard to like that. And I do, I always mention Trey Lyles as a, a solid dart throw value piece. You know, he'll range anywhere from 10 to, you know, mid 20s minutes, depending on how he's doing, if there's any foul trouble for Sabonis. 
So I will always mention him as a decent guard throw piece for value. Moving on to Atlanta here. Trey Young, uh, that last game, was it kind of ended his streak of, I think it was what? It was almost like 10, 12 games in a row where he's gone for like 30 and 10 in terms of points and assists. So he's been on an absolute historic streak. Ended that last game versus the Bulls, but still played 40 minutes. Still went for 13 assists, 21 points, just to not shoot the ball well. 3 of 12, 6 of 17 overall. So once again, it's hard to not really like Trey Young here. He's just been absolutely killing it the past uh, you know, two weeks. Uh, so really, really like him. Jamal, or excuse me, DeJounte Murray, more so a, a contrarian mid-range option here. Um, as you can see, he's been been having solid upside. It's just one of those things I'd rather get to Trey Young at his price tag. Bogdan, I do think I'd rather get to him than DeJounte. He's been super, super aggressive off the bench. He's been playing really, really good minutes, as you can see here. Uh, 21 shots, 6, 15, 24, 14, 16. I mean, the past month, he's been playing 30-plus minutes and shooting the ball pretty much 15 or more times. Has a really, really good upside. In a game like this, um, do really, really like his upside there. So I'm going to throw him in the player pool right now of guys I, I really like. They do have Jalen Johnson, who is back. It's still nice to see Boggy uh, play you know, more than 30 minutes with Jalen back. 29 minutes. Uh, we know he's a very, very productive guy. It was nice to see him come out and play, pretty much play 30 minutes uh, like he usually does. And as you can see, has very, very good upside. So another one of those guys I really like there in the mid-range. Kind of leading towards the mid-range build for uh, this slate tomorrow based on the news we have so far. Otherwise, you know, Capella's been there. They're going to need his defense against uh, Sabonis. Bay played 34 minutes, but once again, he's just not been good shooting the ball. His shots will go down there with, you know, Johnson back, you know, Bogdan still being super aggressive. Otherwise, not much interest in me for the Atlanta side. Moving on to Milwaukee here versus Cleveland. I think this could be a sneaky shootout game here. Uh, you know, obviously Milwaukee has been very, very good recently, but still their defense is a little suspect. They do give up a ton of points still. Uh, but yeah, Giannis coming in at 11K, you always like that price tag. Same thing with Dame at 8.8. Uh, he's been actually, you know, killing it the past week and a half. Uh, so good amount of interest to both those guys if you do want some spin-ups. Middleton's been, you know, slowly turning on more, as you can see. He went for 27, 10, and 3. Uh, the minutes are slowly starting to creep to mid-30s, 6.7. He should be around an 8K player if he's seen close to mid-30s minutes for the rest of the season. So I do think there's some a good uh, option there to go to him at 6.7. That's really it. You know, Brook Lopez does have GPP upside, but with a fully healthy team, he's going to see probably less than 10 shots a game, as you can see there. Pretty much averaging about seven, eight shots attempts. So you're really going to hit him to pop off with the blocks uh, and maybe some steals. Otherwise, it's just not really worth it going to him. Beasley should see, you know, 30 minutes. Haven't been the best recently. Uh, obviously, there's some blowout, uh, you know, that kind of have eight into his minutes. But otherwise, should see 30 minutes. You could land on him, but I just don't think there's a need to get him that price tag. That's really it. You know, Connaughton, I guess, is a dart throw play, kind of like Boucher, but he's been very unproductive this season uh, coming off the bench. Moving on to Cleveland here. Uh, Donovan Mitchell's good to go. Uh, he looks really, really good here. Uh, you know, leading this team, 9.5K would definitely be way too cheap. Uh, we've seen the upside with Donovan Mitchell playing and having the team to himself with no Garland and Mobley. He becomes extremely aggressive, and he's been very, very good. So a lot, a lot of interest in him if he is good to go. Uh, and then Allen, I still think, is a very solid play, 7.9K. Not the best price tag, but as you can see, that's huge upside, and they're going to need him, uh, as well as they're going to need Struess, uh, Porter Jr., and Levert. Out of that group, I think Levert's the safest off the bench there. Should see close to 30 minutes. I still don't understand why he's kind of being limited in terms of minutes off the bench. They have no one else, especially this last game. They didn't even have Donovan Mitchell, and he still didn't play 30 minutes. I don't get it. I, I truly don't. I mean, Levert is their only guard playmaker when there was no Mitchell and Garland, and still he only saw 28 minutes. But I still have a ton of interest in him, 6.5. That's a great price tag for him. Porter Jr., I still think, is a pretty solid play, as you can see here. He's kind of like a pods play where they're not going to be super aggressive offensively, but they're really, really good. Again, like the peripheral stats, like rebounds, assists, they can get some steals and blocks as well. And it's just an extra bonus if they actually do become aggressive offensively and shoot the ball. So. Yeah, I'm really, really liking the mid-range build here. There's a lot, a lot of good pieces to get to for this slate tomorrow. Moving on to Philly here. Uh, Embiid is obviously, yeah, it looks like he's still going to be out. So we're going to get the starting lineup once again of Maxi, Harris, Melton, Ubre, and Paul Reed. Paul Reed been absolutely terrible in his starts uh, until that last game there. Or excuse me, let me rephrase that. Terrible the first game. I uh, finally turned on that second game there. Even though he was, I think, he was in early foul trouble. He was kind of dealing with foul trouble, but still played 32 minutes. As you can see, he does have that upside there. Uh, if he's staying out of foul trouble, seeing 30-plus minutes, 
I think it's a very, very strong play still at 5.3K. It's just the foul trouble, right? Like, if he stays out of it, we should be good to go. If not, we're going to get screwed. That's kind of the, the thoughts there. Maxi, I still think, is a fantastic play. Another one of those guys who's been struggling the past two games without Embiid, but still 9K for a guy that should see 40 minutes, 20-plus shot attempts, double-double upside with assists. I mean, really hard not to like him here against Houston. Same with Tobias, Mountain, and Ubre. I mean, they're all too cheap for their expected roles. Once again, no Embiid. They're all going to see mid-30s minutes, and they're all going to shoot probably close to 15 times each. It, so it's really hard not to like all three of them. Obviously, Ubre had a, a pretty tough game there, uh, one of seven. Wasn't really involved. Obviously, going against Orlando, great defensive team. Kind of slowed down the, the pace in the game. So some of them did struggle, but still, I really like them. And I, I do think Obama's an, a solid backup option here, 4.2K for centers. Uh, we did see some more run from Morris there, who had an okay game, but still. I just kind of stick with the main guys there. They're giving them a ton of run. And they have a ton of usage to go around. So, once again, another team that has a lot of great mid-range options. Moving on to Houston here. Uh, on the Houston side, Sengun and Van Fleet are kind of the only ones that stick out to me. Jamari Smith Jr. is out uh, with an ankle injury. So, we'll have to see who slides in the starting lineup for him. Possibly, could it be Easton here? 6.3K. If that happens, I think he'd be my favorite play on the Houston side here. They could definitely get a little bit weird in difference because they are also missing Brooks. So, would be surprised if we see like Singoon, Van Fleet, Green, Eason, and possibly like an Aaron Holiday or Jeff Green. I mean, they could get very weird here, but there it definitely opens up some value for this Houston side here going against Philly. Um, so yeah, I, I do have some interest here for value. We'll kind of wait and see, just because we really haven't seen too too much here when it comes to uh, the possibilities of the starting lineup there with two guys missing from the starting lineup for Houston. Moving on to OKC here. For the OKC side, I mean, SJ's been him. Fantastic spend-up if you want to you know pay up for a spend-up. Chat has been very, very strong in the mid-range as well, 7.7. Not my favorite price tag, but he's been very, very good recently. Jalen Williams popped off. Kind of hard to trust him. He's kind of been a little bit scoring dependent alongside SGA and those other guys, but still, he's there. Giddy, Dortz, Joe, don't have much interest in this, guys. There's not a lot of value on this uh, Thunder team. Everything is just going through the main three guys of SGA, Chats, and Jalen Williams. And Giddy here and there will pop off. Denver side here, really, really, like, really, really like Jokic if you can pay up for him. Once again, he's kind of been floating on the radar in terms of just, of just DFS production, especially in the media as well on social media. Kind of been flying under the radar. So I do think he's going to start turning on here real soon for the second half of the season. So really, really like him if you do want to spin up for someone. You know, I, I do think it's more of a mid range build slate tomorrow. Jamal Murray, 7.8K, looks really, really good. Porter's price is slowly coming back up. He's had, he's had some pretty solid games. As you can see, has that double-double upside if he hits shots. 7.2K. I think it's fine. Aaron Gordon is out uh, for a few games, maybe a little bit longer. We'll have to see. But they did start Payton Watson uh, for him. 4.5K. I, I think it's an okay value because they'll still have, you know, go, they'll go to guys like Brown off the bench. Uh, you know, they'll throw in some Jackson still. They'll throw in... A little bit of Najee, maybe a little bit of Strother. So nothing too crazy there. Not too much to really like besides the main two for me. And then moving on to the last game here, Charlotte versus Phoenix. Um, it's just you you really hope this game stays close. If it does, you know, Rozier, Bridges should lead the team. TJ Price up to 7K. Do not like that at all. Gordon Hayward is out uh, for like two weeks. So we'll see who starts in place of him. Richards is there. I mean, the Brandon Miller. Wouldn't be surprised if we do see Cody Martin possibly start into move into the starting lineup. Uh, came back from injury, played 17 minutes, and then you know the next game he played 25, uh, and it was decently aggressive, eight shot attempts, kind of like his brother can stuff the stat sheet. He, he usually is pretty aggressive, so he'd probably be my favorite play here if he does slide into the starting lineup there. Uh, the Minnesota McGowns, who's just been again god awful. I mean, their bench is brutal. Nick Smith Jr. It's just a very disgusting bench here. I really want to go to anyone, even if you do think this game blows out. Besides, you know, probably Cody Martin. Uh, and then maybe, maybe taking a shot on Nick Smith Jr. Otherwise, that is just a gross bench. Um, yeah, not much like there for Charlotte. And then moving on to Phoenix here. Obviously, fantastic matchup here. You just got to hope this game stays close. If you do, Booker and Durant look like fantastic plays coming off of a big game there for Durant. I uh, had a you know triple-double pretty, pretty quick there that last game. Booker has been once kind of like Jokic, very disappointing in terms of DFS upside uh, recently. So I, I I know both of them are going to start popping off soon. Uh, so I want to get to that train early. But yeah, both of them look great. Nurkic, a solid mid-range play. Still needs need to get to him, especially in a blowout. Uh, Bill is also potentially back, uh, which will obviously limit the upside of these other guards here. Allen, Gordon, 
and the guys off the bench. And with that in mind, it's really just getting to the two top guys for me because we saw they're still going to be the main dogs, even with Beal back. And that's really it. So that is the breakdown. As I said, there's a lot, a lot to like here in the mid range. Um, so I want to be, I want to mind, you know, building with guys from, you know, ranging from like 6K to 9K and just staying in that range because there's a lot, a lot of good options of guys who are seeing 30 plus minutes. They're shooting 15 or more times. And there's a lot of teams who are missing. They're kind of their main guys. And uh, there's guys stepping up who are going to have a ton of usage, ton of shot attempts, a ton of minutes. So it's one of those things. I do think the mid range is definitely the route to go right now, unless we get some crazy news kind of mixing everything up. But hope you guys liked the video. Uh, I have some updates on Twitter or my Patreon. I'll see you guys next video. Peace.